Hey guys, what's going on? It's that home theater dude. Got a brand new episode for you today. Today's actually a super cool video because I got the Panasonic UB9000. If you guys are as serious about home theater as I am, then you guys know that this thing is the bee's knees right now. Um, they're basically the only place that sells them is Value Electronics. And Robert over at Value Electronics actually sent one out for me to, to review for you guys. And I can't wait to actually get it unboxed and see what see what the actual projector see what the actual player does itself because I've heard that the HDM optimizer on this thing basically makes it look like you got a brand new projector. So um, if you have a projector set up, if you have a TV set up, there's optimizations for, for both type of uh, platforms and I can't wait to get into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the unboxing right after the intro. All right, so what do you get in the box? You get the remote, which is oddly similar to a Denon remote, if you're familiar with that. Obviously some batteries for the remote. The owner's manual. I think this is just the simplified version. If you want the full version, I think you can get it online. And your standard power cord. Another thing you get in the box is a personalized business card from Robert over at Value Electronics. I think that's actually super awesome because in a world that's dominated by like e-commerce and Amazon and things like that, there's still brick and mortar shops out there. And uh, it's, it just reminds me of the old ways of doing things. And you know, if, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? So if you guys want to go ahead and check these guys out, highly recommend it. And here it is. It's not bad to look at. I really like the brushed aluminum finish. It's a really nice touch. I think it's very well refined. And this thing will be a centerpiece for anyone's home theater for sure. I did notice that it did take a while to load once you actually load a 4K disc. The loading tray pops out quick and it slides back in ultra quiet. Alright guys, so I'm a firm believer in the fiber HDMI cables for video performance. And if you guys don't know why, I'll leave a link at the top right of the screen. But on the back there are two outs, HDMI outs, and one of them is an audio video and the one, is, one of them is just an audio only. So with the fiber HDMI, I like to use that one in the audio video. So I plug that one in to the back of the device and then I plug it into my display. So if it's a projector, TV, OLED, whatever it is, you just plug one cable directly into that. And then you can have your audio out going into your, your receiver. That way you can have your full surround sound. You have a USB on the back, optical, digital outs. And then you have your 7.1 on the back. And then you can also have two of the balanced XLR outputs. As you can see, I'm back at a Wade's Home Theater here in Arlington, Texas. The one that I showed you guys earlier with the, the, the basement home theater. If you guys haven't seen it, I'll go ahead and leave a link right up here. But uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're back here because I had to pull out the big guns. I got the Panasonic UB9000 and he has the Oppo 203. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick little comparison in between the two and see if you guys notice the difference in between the Panasonic, the Oppo, and then I kind of threw something cool in the end and I'll, I'll, I'll discuss that whenever I get to it, alright? So let's go ahead and jump into the video. Alright guys, let's get down to the nitty gritty. So this is a direct comparison between the Oppo 203 and the Panasonic UB9000. It's just out of the box performance. The only thing I changed on the Panasonic was the HDR optimizer. Other than that, I did a firmware update and that is all that uh, that I did to the Panasonic. And now all these settings, you can basically just set them to auto and the, the, the Panasonic is just so smart that it'll figure everything out. So, and the cool thing is, is you can have different display types, projector, high lumen, low lumen, OLED, and it'll optimize it for you. But now here's the controversial part. I went ahead and made this AB test. The camera settings were exactly the same in between every single test. The, nothing changed at all. These are unedited images. So you guys let me know if you guys see a difference in the actual clips themselves. So this is the editing software that I use. I basically just did a still of the clip that I just showed you guys. And this is just trying to accentuate what I was talking about, the differences in between the Oppo and the Panasonic. Then again, you can see the difference in gradations in the sky. So I really like this one because this one really, really accentuates the differences in between the two. 
Um, it, it, it seems like Panasonic is, is the, the winner for overall sharpness and uh, contrast. But here's one that Oppo definitely won. Whenever you can actually look at the helicopter, look at the blades. So I went ahead and try to show that again. I go in and out on the blades. So which would you rather prefer? Here's another good scene that actually shows the overall sharpness and, co and comparison in between the two. It's not isolated ju to just one scene either. That's why I moved the image. So also did Guardians of the Galaxy. This one's actually really good. Really great contrast. All right, so what I want you guys to focus on is the rings on the planet and also the planet itself. All right, so pay attention to the actual colors on the, the, defend, the word Defender. Can you see how deep they are on the right versus the left? This is probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I'm gonna set this next scene up. Look for the detail in the fireball. Alright, so I hope by now we can tell the difference in between the Oppo 203 and the Panasonic UB9000 with the HDR optimizer. But next what I did is I did the UB9000 with the HDR optimizer with a cheapy HDMI cable and a fiber 4K HDMI cable. And can you guys tell the difference? Check out the colors on top of Deadpool's head. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about a couple pros and cons of the Panasonic UB9000. Number one, the picture quality on this thing is outstanding. I really like the HDR optimizer feature on that one. It really sets it apart from the rest of the, the 4K players out on the market right now. And another thing is if you're going to be using this one with a fiber HDMI cable, I highly recommend it because if, if, if you guys haven't seen it, I went ahead and did a video showing a standard HDMI cable and a fiber HDMI cable. And whenever you do the difference in between the two, if you're just running a direct from the player to your, to your actual device, you can actually see a, a notable difference. So, Whenever you're going to be using something like the Panasonic UB9000, if you're going to be paying this price, obviously you don't want to compromise. So why would you just not go ahead and get the, get the right cable for it? So let's talk about pro number two, the remote. The remote actually matches the finish on the player. So it has that kind of a brushed type of aluminum finish. Um, it feels sturdy in the hand and uh, whenever you click a button, there's a nice little bit of feedback to it. So you actually know whenever you press a button, you can hear it, you can feel it different things like that. And uh, there is a con with the remote, so I'll talk about, that, talk about that in a minute. So let's talk about one more thing, the settings. So whenever you're actually doing the settings on this thing, whenever you're setting it up, 
The, it's, it's very intuitive, it's very user-friendly, it's easy to navigate through, and there's optimizations for just about anything that you can think of. So if you have a projector, there's optimizations for high lumens, low lumens. There's, if you're using an OLED, it'll change different things like that. So there's also tone mapping, there's settings for all other, other kinds of things. It's very intuitive and actually very, very smart. So I really applaud the R&D that went into this thing, especially after seeing the video quality that comes out of it and actually hearing the audio quality that comes out of this thing. Cons? Not many. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I mentioned the remote earlier. One thing that I, I did notice whenever I was messing around with the Oppo and the Panasonic at the same time, whenever you lift up the Oppo, it actually turns on the light. Same thing like if you have your cell phone, whenever you lift it up, it'll turn on the light. This thing, you have to press the little button. Nitpicky, I know, but uh, that's just one thing that I noticed. Another con is gonna be longer load times on the player whenever you load a 4K disc. So it's slightly longer than the Oppo 203. Again, just nitpicky stuff. It's, it's not gonna bother most people. Another thing I noticed is that whenever you're actually clicking through and you're trying to get a, to a specific scene, that this thing takes a little while to jump to the next scene. It was notable whenever I was doing it and then I had my friend do it at the same time. And uh, it's, 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 it's still just one of those little nitpicky things, but optimization is, is key, especially if you're paying the big bucks for this thing. Um, like I said, there, there, I, I really have nothing bad to say about this thing. Amazing picture quality. The functionality on it is just outstanding. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna go ahead in this video here. Hope you enjoyed it. I know that Spare Change and Techno Dad already did the UB9000, and hopefully this video was a little bit different than those. So each, each video that you guys watch, it gives you a little more information than you didn't have before. So um, I really enjoyed making this video. It was really, really cool. Especially big thanks out to Robert over at Value Electronics. Very, very cool for him to actually send, send one of these out for me to review. And these are a hot commodity because he has these allocated each and every single month. So if you guys wanna go ahead and get on board and pick one of these up, you're gonna to have to get on the waiting list. So uh, just go ahead and contact him. I'll leave his links down, down in the description. So if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a like, favorite, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the subscribe bell. I really appreciate you guys for watching. Catch you guys next time.